This is Christian Basics 1, and I'm always happy to see you once again. It's wonderful that you're joining me again today. Just again, banking details for those that want to partner and contact details. And today we're continuing our conversation as we're talking about the will of God. And uh, we want to discuss this topic because it's so important. Now, I realize that we are dealing with different people here. I mean, not all of us that do this course are mature. Some of, the, some of us are, are, are possibly doing this as discipleship. So we're starting off with this as, as, a, as a basic disciple and we want to train and learn and, and personal development is taking us through quite a few things. And uh, I believe that as we doing these things and we, and we implement them in our lives, that it can be the, a great foundation. When it comes to the will of God, for me, it's the greatest purpose for existence. We don't want to not fulfill the will of God. Uh, we love the Lord and when we become Christians, we want to live in His will and bask in His will. And in this section, we're going to talk about it. It says here, God wants every one of His children to understand His will. It's not easy, but quite possible. Ignorance is no excuse. And through the years, I've, I've met so many people that have become so confused about God's will in their lives. And sometimes it's because of circumstances, it's because of things that happen. Uh, a lot of times it's because of a misunderstanding uh, of Scripture, where they don't understand the Scripture correctly. Uh, they have some theological challenges as far as certain doctrines are concerned. And it can really put them in a position where they're not sure what God's will is. So uh, I would say as, as you're in the right place because you're studying God's word you, in Christian basics and, and in the phase one of this course, you're going to be going through a lot of things that are going to be, uh, some of them very fundamental, but they are going to give you a good foundation so that your doctrine will be at least sound. There's not, nothing worse than living your entire life, in living a lie and, and, and not knowing what the truth is truth was and a lot of people even think they're living in God's will today and they're living in devastation and pain and poverty and they think this is God's will for them a lot of them actually thinks it's very holy but there's no scripture for that there's no scriptural support for that and you know I, I'm not here to persuade you what God's will is I'm I'm here to persuade you to study his word and to allow his Holy Spirit to change you for me the two elements if if a Christian studies the word and he, he spends time in, in, in the presence of the Spirit. And a lot of times that does entail submitting yourself to a local church, serving in a local church, becoming active in that church, and also submitting yourself to the leadership of that church so that you can be in the corporate anointing and in the presence of the Lord and that you can start functioning. Later you will, you will learn about the gifts of the Spirit. And in this section we will also talk about that as, as we say, you know that sometimes you can be led by those gifts, but those gifts can't function if you're not in the body, if you're not plugged in. And you need to plug into God before you can plug, plug into man, if, if I can put it that way. And uh, to be plugged into God is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and then to walk in Him. And to walk then uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit and then to start serving in the kingdom. It's no use being isolated, running away. A lot of times, even in messages, you will hear things that might even offend you and uh, or upset you or be challenging. And then you might think, well, I'm not going back. But if the Lord doesn't release you, if, if you don't feel released by the Spirit of God, if, if you don't feel peace to go away, don't go away in bitterness because that will really stop the will of God uh, from taking place in your life. In fact, what I would sort of say at this point is that one thing I've seen over all these years is that many, many people, they miss God's best. I actually know of a, a particular couple that they were so anointed and, the, and they loved the Lord so much. And for, for a period, they, they really started progressing in the kingdom and they were like a water well. It says, like Jesus said, streams of living water will come from your belly. The, the water was gushing out from, from this couple. And they, and they were feeding people. And then something went wrong in terms of a, a decision that they made. And what happened was one thing led to another thing. And they really made some poor choices. 
the choices that they made, if you look at the Bible, you can say those choices weren't right, according to the Bible. But what happened eventually is those choices had tremendous consequences. And it removed them from their kingdom position of authority and power and actually started crippling them in every single area. And sadly, that couple passed away without leaving a legacy, without leaving an effective kingdom uh, strategic follow-up plan where somebody um, with a um, sensation plan or sensation plan where, where somebody would come and, and take over from you. They... they they didn't have any of that. And that's the, that's how serious this is. So we need to look at it. Uh, we, we asked the question in the, in the session topics, is it possible? And we say it is possible to understand the will of God. Uh, judging the will of God, how will we judge it? A relationship is first. We talk about the key of, of, uh, of fellowship, uh, right attitude, how God communicates. And uh, we need to get to a point where following the guidelines on how to know the will of God and progressively move closer to the center of His will. Because you want to be in the center of His will, just like I want to be there. And um, we say here, it is possible to understand the will of God. Uh, Ephesians 5.17 would not have said, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That scripture would not have said that if it wasn't possible. So it is possible to understand the will of God. But I do believe, according to my experience, that God's will is in His word, number one. And you can see there, you know, it says God gave us His word. And God's will is also communicated by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And we know that the Bible says we must not grieve the Spirit and we must not quench the Spirit. Uh, this indicates that it's easy for us to not hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, especially, especially if, if our outer man is strong. So you are a spirit, you live in a body and you have a soul. And if your outer man is extremely strong, it will be easy for you to quench the Spirit and not hear the Holy Spirit. Uh, scripture can be very misunderstood uh, if it's not, uh, you know, properly uh, analyzed. And uh, we do hermeneutics in, in the third phase, uh, the art and the science of biblical interpretation, where you are learned to interpret Scripture. One of the most common problems these days with Scripture is the fact, one of the, of the laws uh, um, of hermeneutics says that you need to look at the covenant that you're in. So if something's written under the old covenant, uh, the, the, the covenant of Moses, we cannot look at it under the new covenant. We cannot judge it uh, the same as we would under the new covenant. So th there's a lot of things that we have to learn in terms of that so that, you know, it's, it's one thing to know God's, and, and, and a lot of people say God's will is God's word. And that's true. But um, it's actually God's will is God's word properly understood. <laughs> because a lot of times you can you can take many Old Testament scriptures that that, that were written for the Jews um, uh, under the, the the period of the pilgrims or under Abram Isaac Jacob and and then take that scripture and take it out of context and just apply it for today as if it was written to us it wasn't written to us it was written to them but for us so we can make inference from the scripture if we use proper interpretation principles. And then we will get closer to the will as we have the revelation knowledge of God's word. Not just the letter, not just the logos, but actually the rhema. Judging the will. It talks here about the pillar in the wilderness. You can read those scriptures and just talks about the direction and the protection that God has. One day I was talking to the Lord and I said, Oh Lord, what's going on in my life? What's going on in my life? Why? Why am I not um, uh, progressing? Why is things so difficult for me in that? And you know what? The Lord showed me a picture of myself in the desert like these guys were. Uh, and they had this, this uh, pillar cloud uh, protecting them against the heat of the day. And I saw myself actually running away and, um, and going on with my own ideas and then saying to the Lord, Lord, where are you now? Where are you now? And then the cloud was way back there. And I was way in front here. 
and I was doing my own thing. I lost sensitivity of the spirit and I and I was busy with a lot of things, but it was the wrong things. And I ended up being really burnt in the sun because I actually removed myself from God's will. And this is just what, what I saw when I read this uh, portion of scripture. And then um, we must also understand that, and this we've seen a lot in the churches, as we enter into sinful practice and we allow sin to come into our lives, uh, we will be hardened to the Spirit. And uh, this is very dangerous. So sin is something that we need to understand that our natural man will sin and that our natural desire is towards sin many times. But we cannot cherish sin and we cannot have concealed sin or besetting sins in our lives that we allow because it will it will stop us from getting into God's will. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of times when we get into certain sins, they release a certain uh, amount of curse in our lives and we start really battling in certain areas. So we, we have to be uh, careful because we do need continual direction and we can only get that if we are in step with the Spirit, if we can hear what the Spirit says. Uh, another aspect that we discuss in the course notes here is the renewing of the mind. Uh, Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove uh, what the good, uh, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God is. And it says, test and approve. So when you're seeing in your life certain things, you have to test and approve those things. You have to decide, is, is this from God? This is, is this God's will? Am I at the center of God's will by the circumstances and the situation that I'm facing now? You've renewed your mind. You've, you've judged what the scripture says. And now you're saying, no, it's not. This is not God's will for me. This is not what God wants for me. This is not God's best for me. And this is not a teaching on the covenant, but looking at, the, for instance, the old covenant and looking at Deuteronomy 28. Uh, if, you, if you read the blessing part of the covenant, you read what they were blessed in, in the field and they were blessed in their buckets and they were blessed in their cattle and they were blessed in their family and they were blessed in everything they did, everything they put their hand to, there was a blessing upon. That blessing that we read about there, if we if we take that scripture, we know it's the old covenant. Uh, Hebrews tells us this, that it's a covenant with inferior promises. Uh, and there's inference made in, in the book of Hebrews that the the covenant pro promises of Deuteronomy 28 through the cross is magnified. It's bigger. But if you're seeing the opposite in your life, so some of those aspects of the promise that you see, maybe what Peter wrote, by his stripes you were healed, but you're seeing disease in your body. You've renewed your mind and you've said, this is what God's will is for my life. This is what God's promise is for my life. I'm not approving this. I'm, I'm testing it. It's failing the test and I'm not approving it. Then we start taking authority in those areas of our lives because we know uh, what God's will is. We're pursuing God's will. And the physical manifestation of what we're seeing in our lives now at this moment is not God's will. And that's why you need to get your theology straight. One of the greatest preachers of our time, uh, before they went into the ministry and they really had a powerful ministry, one of their family members said to them, I want to say one thing to you today as you're entering into ministry. Get your theology straight. Your theos, your understanding of God, get straight what you believe. And then stick to that. Don't be confused because if the devil sees you confused, you will, uh, you will suffer a lot of consequences and you will very seldom be in God's will. You will always be fighting. So we've got the renewing of the mind. Um, and this is, we want to we freely eat God's word as, as the hunger of the spirit is in our hearts. We eat the word. Then we have the capacity to evaluate the thoughts as they come in. It says here in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of, of God, um, bringing every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ. So when you have an incorrect thought, I had somebody that contacted me today about fear thoughts. When you have those thoughts, he said to me, does that mean that you've bowed before it? I said, no. A lot of times we have thoughts. We have incorrect thoughts. We have ungodly thoughts. That's not a sin. 
uh, um, one of the preachers once said that you, you you know a bird can fly over your your head and and, and, and leave a dung on your head but uh, you know you can't help for that and a lot of times that's what happens when when we get these thoughts when thoughts come into our minds but when we think about those thoughts and we and we cherish them and we and we allow those thoughts to start growing in our mind uh, the seed of of evil the, the the seed of fear the the seed of negativity growing in our mind then produces fruit and uh, but he says you can't stop the bird from coming and making a nest in your head and a lot of christians they allow the birds to nest in their head and if your thoughts are contaminated and you are not taking those thoughts captive it means that you are actually going to be in a position of a, a terrible mental state. Uh, you're going to be under tremendous strain and you're not going to be in the will of God. You're not going to be able to hear the Holy Spirit. You're not going to even have a desire for the word at some stage of that whole cycle that it goes through because things are just so uh, dull for you and and so difficult for you and you and, and all you're feeling is frustrated and irritated and everybody's wrong and everything is wrong and you're not happy about anything and what has happened is you've allowed those thoughts to come into your mind your mind was not renewed you didn't take those thoughts captives you have, you've allowed them to come into your mind and now they've become strongholds and sometimes then it's difficult to see you know the difference between the stronghold and your personality it, you start actually becoming that neurotic person uh, because of the constant thoughts and the, and the strongholds that you have in your mind. And a lot of times then um, you get, uh, um, I call them idiosyncrasies, you, you get weird ideas about weird things and, and uh, you know, you seldom uh, can see the light. You can seldom see the positive and everything is just wrong and you always want to go for prayer. Some, you know, and people must pray for you, but you're just never getting out of that cycle. Uh, you need to be reprogrammed as a computer. A lot of times when we have a computer and, and a customer brings in a computer and that thing is full of viruses, um, you know, we go and we wipe that thing. We just clean it out totally. We reload the software. We, re we reload every correct driver and we ensure that that thing's running pristine. That's what sometimes has to happen with your mind. You, you need to get to that point where you let go and let God and you get deliverance from those areas. Uh, because else you will never live in God's will and the devil will keep you in bondage for your entire life. Um, talking about relationship first, we understand this. We understand that um, it's a, a, a principle that we have to have a relationship. We have to have fellowship with our Heavenly Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times, like I said before, uh, that fellowship is definitely facilitated by members of the body of Christ where we have fellowship together. Uh, Paul's prayer here is significant also uh, and that is uh, you, you know when he prayed for, for uh, he prayed for the church leaders and he prayed for believers and he, and he says to them there um, that you have to know the will of, 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 of God you have to know the will of God. Uh, you have to live a life worthy of the Lord. You have to bear fruit in every good work. You have to grow in the knowledge of God. And, and growing in that knowledge of God is growing in the will of God. This is Paul's prayer for us, for believers. And we need to understand that because, you know, Christianity, uh, and like I say, I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I could be speaking to people that have been on the road a long time and others that might have come to Christ recently. It doesn't matter. I'm speaking to all of you and saying the same thing because I reiterate those things even in my own life. We're never above that uh, because we we are a spirit. We live in a body. We have a soul. We are trying to yun being, which means that our mind needs to be constantly renewed. Our thoughts need to be monitored and, and we need to take control over those thoughts. We have to remain connected in the spirit uh, to the Holy Spirit so that we can hear exactly what the Lord is saying and then take the, the correct action. This is something that we are responsible for. Uh, we can't, um, you know, trust that somebody else would do it and we will never get into God's will if we don't pay that sacrifice. Uh, again, we talk about dependence. We talk about obedience. We talk about patience. Uh, we talk about sensitivity. 
I mean, you can read all those scriptures, but those things are so critical. And you can't have sensitivity if, you don't, if you're not connected. Uh, many people have lost the connection with the head. And then the, the, the last section that we're looking at is how does God communicate? And we've covered some of it already. So I don't want to unnecessarily make the lectures long uh, by, by just rehashing everything again. But we said that God communicates with us through His Scripture. And how many times I, I read the Bible, I read a Bible story, I, I read something in the Word and the text just jumps right out of me. Out of me. I just see the text and, and it just starts speaking to me. And then for an hour, the Lord is speaking to me through the text. And I, I just uh, get up there and I feel so refilled with the presence of the Lord. I feel so refilled with the joy of the Lord. So, so what am I saying? If we don't read the scripture, if we don't, uh, and many people don't read their Bibles, uh, it's, a, it's a well known fact uh, that many Christians don't read their Bible. In fact, surveys that were conducted came out shocking with uh, something like 10% of Christians uh, saying that they read their Bibles and 90% of them didn't read their Bibles and they don't read their Bibles. So it's going to be a temptation for you, especially if you're a new Christian to um, not read the Bible and to just, uh, you know, just carry on. And, and you get away with that for a, for a while, uh, while you're in sort of the honeymoon phase and you, you're still feeling uh, all the joy and the Holy Spirit is still uh, lavishing you with the presence. And, but there's a stage where you have to mature, when you have to grow up. And that's when you're really going to need the Word in your life. So uh, Scripture becomes a very important part of our lives because we have to eat our daily bread and that is what the scripture is. And the Lord will then guide us through the scripture. The word says that, that his, his word is a light to our path and a lamp to our foot. Indicating that the scripture shines light. And many circumstances that I faced in my life before. I've said, Lord, what is your will in this area? What do you want in this area? And then I read a scripture and that scripture tells me exactly. Exactly. Uh, then we've also got the inward voice. Uh, that means... Uh, you know, uh, you, you're hearing the Spirit say, and here's this example in Acts uh, 10, 19, and 20, Peter uh, thought about the vision, and the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you, arise and go. So Peter heard the voice of the Spirit speak, and we need to be able to hear the voice of the Spirit speak. We, we, we speak about prayer um, in, in, in the second subject, in the, well, in the second, uh, uh, in Christian Basics Part 2, we speak about prayer. And there we do talk about the time when you're praying, when you actually stop uh, praying. And then you're listening. You're hearing. What is the Lord saying? A lot of people, they want to know the will of God, but they don't keep quiet long enough to hear it. Sometimes the, the Lord wants to talk to you with an inward voice and you just need to become silent and hear. Especially when I was young and young in the Lord, I would just run with things and uh, when things really got bad and I wasn't unsure and I thought why is stuff so difficult in my life um, am I out of God's will or what's going on here I would then remember myself and remind myself say, okay let's go and have quiet time let's go and pray and I would I would pray in the spirit I would read scripture I would um, then get to a point maybe worship maybe take my guitar worship a bit and then I would get to a point where I would just be quiet. I would sit in the room and I would literally just sense the peace of God in the place. And then I would just be entirely quiet and listen for that inward voice. And then that voice would speak. And I would know that voice so well because many times at significant intervals in my life that voice spoke. One Sunday after leading worship in church I walked out the church and as I walked out the church, I had my guitar and I had it over my back because I still had a motorbike. I looked down at the ground and as I looked down at the ground, I heard the, the Spirit say, the inward voice of the Spirit say, I am your source. In other words, I'm your provider. And I'm sort of, yes, Lord, I know you. I was perplexed by what the Spirit said because I didn't quite understand what he meant. I thought I knew this and... and um, but somehow the Holy Spirit said it to me. I, was, I just came out of the atmosphere of worship. I was in tune with the Spirit. I heard this. 
And then the Monday morning, I drove into the business where I worked, and there I saw the guys were, um, their faces were down. Everybody's looking so down. And when I got to the first employee that I worked with, he said, no, company's closing, we're all retrenched. And then um, my employer called me in and said, you're retrenched. At that stage, we were just about to get married. Uh, we had just booked the, uh, uh, the facility. Um, I was actually then, uh, you know, getting married and, and, and my wife was marrying somebody that was unemployed. But I heard the voice and I knew that this was God's will for me um, at that stage. And, and again, it's a dangerous thing to say because if you really look at the blessing, God wants us blessed. But sometimes there's a season, there's something we have to go through that's, that doesn't look blessed, but it's taking us towards that blessing. Because what the Lord did is He took me out of that business into the business that I actually became a general manager in. So God knew which business would, would allow me to grow. And again, it, it was just that element of trusting Him, understanding that His will is better, understanding that He knows better. So even when I'm facing a difficulty, I can rely upon the guidance of the inward voice where the Holy Spirit is saying something to me and saying to me, look, I'm your source. And the next day I find out exactly why he said it. Because for a few months I was without work and I had to trust in God's provision until the Lord opened this new position for me. And even when he opened it, I didn't understand it. But I again heard the inward voice that said to me, this is the work I have for you. And I said, but Lord, I, I'd rather prefer that work. But he knew that this work was getting me, was going to get me to uh, a way better position than any of the other opportunities that were available. So we need to be sensitive to the inward voice. Also the ordering of circumstances. And there the company went bankrupt. Circumstances happened. Something happened. And uh, you, you could look at it and say, oh, this is a bad thing. But it turned into a good thing. And then we've also got the counsel of others. Uh, Proverbs 11, 14. Uh, where there is no counsel, the people fall. Uh, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Sometimes the Lord will, will speak through people that counsel you, that, that gives you good advice. And it's a good thing to, to really open yourself up and to hear what the Lord's saying. If the Lord wants to talk to you through somebody and He wants to do something for you, then to, to be sensitive and to be teachable. I think teachable is is probably one of the biggest words because a lot of us aren't teachable. What we found a lot of times is, I mean, I've had, I have this business experience and then I served it as, as a pastor, as assistant pastor and administrator of the ministry. And um, some of the people that were in leadership team with me, they would make decisions that uh, were business-wise not very good decisions. Uh, you didn't really need a business degree or a a business acumen to understand that what they're doing now is is really not a good decision but what they would normally do is they would make those decisions and then go into the entire decision and then end up at the end of the day making a mess and then coming to the pastors and the spiritual leaders and saying oh we've got a problem pray with us that you know um a lot of times God uses the counselors, the, the people that are experts in certain fields to give us information so that we will enter into God's will, uh, you, you know, by a counsel. So don't be scared. I'm not saying you have to run to counselors for everything, but uh, God normally surrounds us. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki calls it his team. The Lord surrounds you with a team of people, with people that are experts in certain areas. These are your counselors. These are your sounding boards. They're people that you can say things to and then let them bounce it back at you. But don't just think that, you know, you have to rely on the inward voice. Yes, you have to rely on scripture, but sometimes you have to actually rely on people that, that have expertise in a field that you need to know something about. And then you need to go to those people and you need to get obtain counsel from them in order for you to move into God's perfect will in those areas. And then we've got the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we cover that in, in our lectures. But if, if you're looking at the prophetic, if you're looking at the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, many of these gifts will give us direct guidance and uh, into God's will. 
And that can happen in a church service. When I was a young boy and I came to the Lord, a lady came to me and she prophesied. And, and the prophecy that she said, I can still remember today. And that's guided me. Uh, the, uh, the prophecies are a, are a light in our path a lot of times. And I know there's, there's an abuse, <laughs> there's a great abuse in the prophetic. Uh, it, it, and um, uh, people will probably say that I mustn't say this, but uh, a lot of times the prophetic becomes pathetic when um, it, people are trying to move into the dimension of, of the occult almost where they, where they, uh, they see prophets as Shangomas and, 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 uh, and soothsayers and, and those sort of things and, and they misunderstand the, the prophetic, they misunderstand the gift of the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, uh, uh, maybe even the, the gift of uh, tongues and the interpretation of tongues. A lot of these things are misunderstood and then misused and, and that sort of thing. But what I found is this lady came to me and she gave me a prophecy and the Holy Spirit uh, confirmed the prophecy by by uh, releasing his presence upon me at that stage. And I, to this day, I can still remember what she said. She said, many that are in darkness will see the light because of you. And God will bless you with mighty men. Uh, there's a prophecy that the Lord will surround me with mighty men. with well, Like David had his mighty men. And it's not necessarily just men. It, it's women as well. But people that, that are mighty and these people will assist me and stand by me as the Lord will use my life to turn people from, from the darkness to the light. From the darkness to the light. And that's exciting. That prophecy has, has really prompted me into the will of God. And every time I look at, at things I'm doing, I, I consider that prophecy. And then I've also seen the gifts work, the other gifts work in those areas. So we must look at the gifts of the Spirit and respect them. And practice them and, and as the Bible says eagerly desire the gifts and we will talk about that more in in, in one of the following sessions as, as we go through the course notes and then there's peace and Colossians 3 15 says uh, let the peace of God rule in your heart that first Thessalonians 5 20 scripture says do not despise prophecies that's what I said then test all things um, but yeah we are moving into the dimension of peace where we say, okay, what is this peace? How do we get in this peace? How are we going to be part of this peace? And a lot of times when you are moving away from God's word and God's will, you will experience a tremendous lack of peace. And that is a good indication because then you know you have to take corrective action. You know, I had a problem with the employee a few years ago and man, this, this employee gave me a hard time. I don't want to go into the details, but it ended up to a point where this employee actually uh, went to go work for, for my direct uh, competition in our industry. And the day that it happened, um, I was extremely angry and um, I remember uh, communicating with my lawyer. And, 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 and asking my lawyer, you know, because I know I had a contract on this employee of mine. So I spoke to my lawyer and, and, and my lawyer said, no, everything is 100%. You, you are legally uh, entitled to, to uh, take legal action. Uh, we will commence with legal action. Uh, we will do everything and you must worry about a thing. The lawyer actually drew up those contracts initially. They were airtight. And I got to that point where I was so angry that day. I was so angry I couldn't hear the voice of the Lord but I I was planning the next day to go and, 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 and just give these people a piece of my mind and tell them are you going to court my friend are you going to you're going to get a hiding in court about this and that night as I was sleeping I think the the soul area the mind area is so occupied and you're so angry, you're so frustrated, you can't hear what the Spirit's saying. But as the soul area started switching off and I went into dream mode and sleeping, I woke up and I woke up with a feeling that I had no peace. My peace was gone. Uh, it was a restless, peaceless feeling. And uh, I was very confused and, and, and first of all, didn't connect the dots. And then all of a sudden, 
I knew that I had made a decision to sue and, and that I had initiated the legal action. And as I was praying in the spirit and I was praying, I, I heard the Lord say to me again, this is a connection, you know, here, here you can also say about the, the inner voice. So I heard the Lord say to me, this is not my will. You have to turn the other cheek. You have to walk the extra mile in this case. Now, I'm not saying this will always happen in business. I'm not saying you you won't uh, you don't have the right to sue people. Um, you know, I probably did have the right, but the Lord, this was not God's will for me to go into that legal battle. And um, later on, I saw why, because the Lord uh, did restoration. So later on, I saw why, and, and we've had a very good relationship years and years after that, a very mutual beneficial relationship uh, uh, for that matter. So the Lord knew, and He knew what His will was. So He, first of all, uh, uh, the peace left me and the peace only returned when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I heard that inner voice as we were talking about you know how God communicates his will so the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he gave me the scripture of turning the other cheek which was a rhema word uh, which guidance through the spirit and, and guidance through the scripture and then when I made the decision I didn't do anything yet with um, with the lawyer, with the, uh, the other parties involved. But when I made that decision, and, and, and I had made the decision, all of a sudden, the peace of God just flooded me. And when that peace flood, flooded me, I, I knew that I was back in the will of God. So that's sort of the, the lecture that, uh, for me, it's very, very important. If you're not in God's will, I mean, what else is left for you? There's nothing left for you. And uh, that ends off lecture three, the will of God here yeah, and the, our personal development as we are developing uh, you know, ourselves in Christ. And next time we're starting off in lecture four, we're going to be talking about Bible study. So I look forward to talking to you in lecture four as we get into Bible study. God bless you.